in terms of talking about how expensive it is to to live here, California's tough to live here, you know? And I understand there's a lot of places in California that are great to live. I live in San Diego. It's expensive to live here in San Diego because why not? Everybody wants to live in San Diego. It's the greatest city, if I'm being biased. We may not have Disneyland, but, you know, we have SeaWorld in the zoo, so that's pretty cool. But it's expensive to live here, and it, it does feel like everything is more expensive because the government has just layered upon regulations and fees and more costs and utilities are so expensive and gas is so expensive. And then like you add that all up and it gets more and more expensive to live here. Any ideas on cost of living here in California and what you can do about it? When I talk to both working class and then folks who are making quite a bit of money, they all paid the same amount for milk, right? It costs a lot. My son, who was, it just went off to college, actually in San Diego. And he said, dad, before I leave off to college, I want to make dinner for you guys. And we're like, well, all right, let's do this. We've been making dinner for you since you were born. So he went to the store. He was going to make some type of ground meat dish. He went to the store. He calls back and he says, is it always this price? Like, I said, well, what are you getting? He said, well, I'm getting some ground turkey, and it's 18 bucks for two pounds. I said, yeah, I mean, pretty much. That's how much it costs. He goes, how do you afford this? I said, welcome to adulting in California. Mm -hmm. It's challenging. It's very challenging to, to do that. One of the ways in that, unfortunately, it's this trickle effect that takes place in business in California. So the trickle of the, the economic trickle effect is I want uh, someone to be paid $20 an hour because they deserve a living wage. Great. That means if three people were working, now only two people can work. So you just lost a job. But hey, great. These two people got $20 an hour. That's not a good solution. And then that same burger that costs $7 is now $13. Now you go to McDonald's and you're paying $20 for a meal. That's insane. The trickle effect of one thing happens across the whole, they're dropping fees everywhere we go, trickling fees everywhere we go. And that trickle effect becomes a ripple effect and the ripple of the economy. So how do we do that? How do we take this trickle and ripple and either slow it down or stop it completely right now here's the reality there's no way to stop it and the reason there's no way to stop it is because there's a super majority this super majority doesn't think about the working class they say they think about the working class but if they did they would understand basic economics and they would understand that when you raise this wage, you you fire one person, and then it means it's it's going to ripple across the entire industry. If they understood business, they would understand those those types of things as well. So, how do we stop it? The way we stop it is we got to break the super majority. That that's the reality to get anything done. And by the way, I talk to Democrats. I'm in Sacramento at least once a month. For the last year, I've been in Sacramento uh, once a month. And when I talk to these moderate Democrats, they want to stop it. But unfortunately, the bigger Democrat establishment system, if you don't follow along, you're not part of the team and they kick you out. They make it very challenging for you. You can't be an independent thinker in, as a Democrat in Sacramento. So what we need to do is we need to break the supermajority so that we can have a conversation and we can have discourse, dialogue. We can negotiate the deal so that it's beneficial to all concerned versus who cares about everybody else. We just want to create fees and, and raise, raise and lose money everywhere we go. And just for clarification, your seat, is it a Democrat or Republican health seat? This seat is a Democrat seat. It is a D plus 15. 
Okay. It is a stronghold. But let me tell you about this stronghold. The last time Bonnie Garcia held this office years ago. That's the last time a Republican held this office. The Democrat who's in currently in place, his name is Eduardo Garcia. The opponent uh, that I have is uh, Joey Acuna. Right now, we have a coalition called Democrats for Gonzalez. And people say, oh, that's cool. Who's on it? Well, we have everyone from electeds that are Democrats to former electeds to former Central Committee, Democrat Central Committee chair, uh, chairman to, I mean, you name it, across the board. And people say, well, how did you do that? How did you change your values so they can jump across? I said, I never changed my values. My values have always been the same. It's com- I want the community to succeed. That's my values. And they said, but yeah, but how did you do that? I said, they are so sick of the progressive left that they feel the only solution is to vote for a Republican. And I'm just, I'm thinking, well, this is the twilight zone. How did this happen? And when they talk about education, security, health care, all the things that a conservative would talk about, there's no difference. There is no difference in, if you will, conservative values and their values. So in this district, I think there is, if you will, three types of groups. Progressive left. This is the defund the police, you know, the crazy. You have moderate slash centrist Democrats and Republicans, and then you have very right Republicans. So those are really the three groups. And because it's a conservative faith, family, freedom, moderates, we are, we're all talking the same thing. And it's interesting. It's interesting to be in the district. Yeah, I want to dig a little bit into that because you're not the first person to say that. We've had other people who have been involved in the legislature talk about this, that it, there is like this this wing of the Democratic Party here in California, and it's it's very clearly the Bay Area progressive wing of the Democratic Party, which for some reason, it's gotten to a point where they run the state, like whatever... Scott Weiner, Buffy Wicks, Alex Lee, whatever those guys want, and gal, whatever they want, it, it just happens. And for some reason, we all kind of sit here and go, why, why are all these San Francisco ideas being shoved through the legislature, being imposed on people in Imperial County who could be not only geographically farther away from Bay Area, but also like ideology wise, like farther away from the Bay Area? Why do they get to run all of California? And I think there's there's murmurings of these moderate Democrats who are going, you know, I'm a Democrat, but I'm I'm not that Democrat. Like, that's way too far left. And let's bring it back a little bit. Let's talk about public safety. Let's talk about making it affordable. Let's talk about maybe energy production here in the state. Um, and I guess the question is, is like, you know, you're, you're reaching your hand out to say, I want to work with you. And a lot of Republicans are starting to do that. They're starting to say, like, let's work together. Um, And and until, I guess, that Democratic machine is kind of weakened a little bit with the supermajority, they're not really going to take that step and work with Republicans? Or is it just, are they going to, do you see a point where maybe a lot of these moderate Democrats go, I might lose my seat if, if these people, if I don't break away from this party and do something more moderate? And maybe I have to work with Republicans. Are you? Do you think that's going to happen sooner or later, that it's just going to be a full break? I call this little town in, in Imperial County that I, I visit quite often. Uh, it's named Calexico. I call it the canary in the coal mine, right? They are, on April 16th, uh, Democrats and Republicans united to oust, to recall two city council members that were too progressive for the the moderate democrats and republicans of that city two of them at the same time they said not in my city no if you're not thinking about us and our safety and uh, us thriving then you don't belong and of course the progressives try to make it about something else but the reality is it, it was about progressive policies trying to infect beautiful the beautiful community of calexico so I always tell that group, I said, you guys are the canary in the coal mine. You're standing up, not because you're a Democrat or a Republican or an independent or whatever. You're standing up for the values of your community. 
you're starting to regain your voice. It says we the people. It doesn't say we the government. We the people are standing up. And Calexico in this district is the canary in the coal mine that's telling all the other cities around them, you will not control our ways anymore. We the community, we the people will stand up and do that. And I've, I've been hearing from quite a few people throughout the, throughout the state of California that this is, this is happening all over. These pulse points of the community taking back their city and saying, this is our expectation. This is what we want. And if you can't do it, we'll fire you. We're starting to see that in different fights up and down the state. I mean, who thought that, well, I've always said, pay attention to who's on school board back when no one wanted to listen to me. But look at how school boards are going to war with people in Sacramento. You know, you have these local communities and these local representatives who are going, hey, we want this for our school and we're going to elect a certain person to represent us for that school board and now sacramento is coming down going no no no, no. You, you guys can't have local control that's that's outrageous we can't let you guys have local control and determine your own the way you want to run your community that's absurd we have to sacramento has to step in and san francisco has to step in and rule your your so it is interesting to see how parts of california are pushing back a little bit and maybe people on the outside are, are shocked to hear that there are cons these pockets of conservatism th throughout California, really, um, that are starting to sprout up and push back a little bit more. Hey, thanks for checking out the California Underground Podcast. If you enjoyed that clip, make sure you subscribe, like, share, review, comment, all that stuff that helps with the algorithm, helps people find us more. And if you want to learn more, you can always listen to our full podcast at Apple, Spotify, Google, all those different places that you basically find podcasts. Or if you just want to keep watching clips, you can check out clips here or you can subscribe to our channel right here, somewhere in here.